One other property that I want to talk about, uh, just to add to our discussion of, of inverses, is I want to think about, um, let's suppose A and B have inverses. And let's just write them, uh, let's say that our inverses are A inverse and B inverse. Then I want to know, does A, B have an inverse? And I can't spell inverse. And if so, what is it? Okay, so if so, what is it? So I want to find the matrix, um, whatever we want to call it. We can call it X. Let's do that. I want to find the matrix X so that when we multiply by AV, we get the identity. Spoiler alert, it does have an inverse, A times B. And we need to think about what is that inverse? Okay, what is that inverse? One thing I want to add, one thing I want to make sense of is A times B inverse is not going to be A inverse times B inverse in general. Okay, that's a property that we're used to sharing with real numbers that's not true here. And in fact, this is true of any power. If you have A times B squared, that's not the same as A squared B squared because the order matters. AB squared is just AB AB. And there's no, uh, there's no switching the order of the two inner, matri inner matrices necessarily, right? So it's really the same problem with inverses. And it turns out that the right way to think about the inverse is that uh, AB inverse is going to be B inverse times A inverse. That's the right order that you have to multiply things in in order to cancel A times B. And so let's just check that that's the case. So if we were to take AB and multiply by B inverse times A inverse, we could do a few things. Uh, one is we could start by using the associative property multiply B times B inverse. We know that that's going to be the identity. And so that's going to leave us with A times A inverse, which is the identity. Okay, so that really does work. Once you know that A times B has an inverse, the fact that inverses are unique tells us that that's the only uh, inverse that we can have. Okay, so that's how that's going to work. And then also notice that we can multiply one of the things that we said up top, let me just scroll back up for just a second. One of the things that we said, um, well, in a previous video, let me just write it, is that if you multiply A by A inverse, that's the same as multiplying A inverse by A. Okay, so if we multiply A by A inverse, that's the same as multiplying A inverse by A. So the order actually does not matter when you multiply A by A inverse. And that's all fine. Uh, the reason why I bring that up is that we can also check that B inverse times A inverse times AB will be the identity. So if I were to take this matrix AB and multiply by its inverse on the right or the left, I'm going to end up with the identity. And you do a very similar calculation. You group the A inverse and A together. You end up with B inverse times B, which is the identity. Okay, so it's basically the same calculation there. So that's a property of the identity that we have there.